So part one of, where did you catch that from mate? I went to a spot that a friend had shared on what three words. I went there and caught nothing. <laughs> but it was obviously a good spot, you know, and it was quite unique for somebody to share their fishing location. You know, you might say to a mate, oh, it was around there, you know, or I don't know, some friend, fishing friend, you might tell them exactly where it is, um, but not many people do. It's all shh, secret squirrel. And I remember when I first started doing YouTube videos, I got um, I got a bit of trolling from somebody when I was giving away carp locations. I was quite keen for people to fish that river and catch carp out of it. And I was literally like, it's under there, it's right there. And uh, this guy slated me and was being really nasty, saying, oh, you can't do that, being horrible, and then blocked me. It was not very nice. <sighs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, this, the rest of this video, we're going to catch up with Andrew and uh, over a pint and talk about it. It's going to be a bit of a podcast. So, uh, I haven't done this before. Uh, see how you go. It's quite nice being out here at morning. I might do all my intros from here. I'll leave you to have a good look at it. <laughs> right, everybody. Uh Welcome to Andrew to Paul Bigry Fishing Channel. Andrew, uh, you revealed on your Facebook page and on the Eden Bridge Angling page, wasn't it, as well? Uh, a secret spot with what three words? Very strange. What was your thinking behind it all? Well, it's, phone, it's, it's not a secret spot. Well, <laughs> yeah, but there's, there's no such thing as a secret spot. We all know we can fish the rivers and that. But to actually tell somebody with a what three words, it's quite unique. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that. Um, I just think it's it's helpful to be quite open and honest. It, certainly on a, a free fishing stretch or a club stretch where people can freely go up and down and fish where they like, mm. I've, I've got no issue with it. And one of the reasons behind it is because if I go there again and someone's fishing there, it forces me to look somewhere else. Because yeah. I think with fishing, we much in a lot of things in life, you can become complacent with what you do. Familiarity yeah. breeds contempt, you know. Yeah, I must admit, I had it last night. I was fishing and you you you're fishing your spots. And then that's not working, and then you're like, oh, where do I go next? And you've almost got to force yourself. So you're yeah. thinking, oh, I'll, I'll tell people about that. If I get there to that spot, it'll make me go to somewhere else and find somewhere else. If you used to fish down at the wreck weir today from here, mm. how many fish are you walking past? Oh, depends on the day, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but it, it's, um, hey, you to be fishing at nursery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 90% of my carp fishing is from the bank outwards and I catch most of my carp within a rod next to the bank. Yeah, sometimes it's it's like you've got that confidence in that swim, haven't you? You're like, I want to go to that swim yeah. and give it a go and so do you ever are you ever cagey about your swims? What swims you tell? Because I I used to be really open on the YouTube channel and be really like, oh yeah they're in there and sometimes I wanted people to fish it because the place has got neglect and the fishing club didn't have uh, wasn't giving the water its attention yeah. because it wasn't getting the footfall. Yeah. So it's hard to raise the need of the water up without yeah. the footfall. So I'm like, get people fishing down there. But latterly, I've been more cagey about telling people. But I don't know, you ever uh, cagey, just quite open? And I I'm quite open, really. I, th I don't know whether that's an age-related thing as well. You get a bit more relaxed with your fishing when you get older. Although you still got the drive to catch the bigger fish, it is. It's often, I find, more of a, a release or escapism away from the family life, the work yeah, life. Yeah. And those pressures, three, four hours you get, yeah. stick the radio on, bit of fishing, yeah. you disappear into your own world for that short it's amount of time. Like I, I had a really busy day yesterday, and I went out night chubbing at like eight o'clock, and it was bliss. Yeah. Just the fresh air, I could honestly snuggle up down there and have a snooze on the bank. Under, <laughs> under a moonlit sky, <laughs> once your eyes have adjusted, yeah. There's nowhere else you want to be, really. It is, isn't it? It is. So I, I was saying at the beginning of this film, I had somebody, um, I was saying about being open, I had somebody troll me right at the beginning of me doing YouTube videos about that carp videos that I was saying, oh, the fish are right under there. Yeah. 
And he was like, you can't do that, that's really, excuse me, you can't do that, that's really uh, against Carpetica and what about all the other guys who fish that spot and they're gonna have it ruined and... Uh, yeah. Put yourself it's almost in... like it is a secret society, the carp thing. You cannot tell people where you go fishing. When was the first time you heard the word syndicate and what was it associated with? Carp. <laughs> Within the last 20, 30 years? Yeah. Clouded yeah. in secrecy? Yeah. But I would imagine most of those people in that syndicate will know exactly where everyone else is fishing, what bait they're using, probably within two square metres of wherever they're casting or putting their bait boat out to. Probably. It is, there, is, there is a bit of secrecy in fishing. I was just watching some match fishing podcasts and they were saying about some of the edges and some of these pro anglers saying because of the rise of the internet and uh, everybody can Google stuff. You know, I've watched tons and tons yeah. of fishing videos. That, um, it's hard to get an edge, so yeah. they're almost more cagey about it. And I know a friend of mine, he fishes... Him and his lad fish uh, a barbel place near here, and the anglers don't tell them anything. His young lad's only 15, 16, and they they like they won't tell him what bait it is and this, that, and the other. And uh, that, that's that's just wrong. I mean, I suppose it's worse on pressured waters, isn't it? Yeah, I think I, I heard Adam Penny maybe on a podcast about a year or oh, so he's ago. Good. The, I haven't listened to he's him. He's good, while. yeah. But he was coming from the angle that the, the club, the waters he fishes, because so many people fish around the moon and the pressure and the wind direction he was starting to do the complete opposite. Yeah. Rather than going pressure. at the full moon, yeah. going at a crescent moon. Oh, I know you're right into all your moon phases. Because, I'm not really, I, I, it's just a guy, use him as a guy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's no fast and secure way of knowing you're definitely going to catch if you go on certain conditions with a certain day. It's enhancing your chances, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But his view was, he started to go when, traditionally, he would have thought he would have the least chance, but fewer people on the water, yeah. less pressure. Just doing something a bit different. The, yeah. The, it's funny you say that actually these match guys they were saying about oh everybody fishes this way or that way and and they said when they started nobody fished like that they when they started doing it they had it all to themselves and the yeah. fish were just lining up like you're saying adam penning going to his carp water when nobody else is going and you know it's you're increasing your odds aren't you? You, get, you get less pressure on water and you get the pick of the swims yeah don't you as well yeah. which yeah. isn't a problem you have in the river because you can come down here and yeah. fish so where you like, when you like. <laughs> this spot you did on what three words? Obviously the video, part one of this video, I went to that spot, but I caught nothing. So you're not just winding me up, <laughs> No, because two Saturdays ago, I think the Saturday before you went on the Sunday, I, like I said a minute ago, I dropped in 10 swims, trotting maggots, and didn't muster a bite anywhere. <laughs> but that is, that's why they call it fishing and not yeah, catching, isn't it? Yeah, but I, yeah. I will more than likely try that spot tomorrow and I'm not sure whether to go with the stick float or oh, right. go with some cheese and yeah, some lunch. you had two really nice perch, didn't you? One just about, <laughs> one just under two pound and one I would say just over two pound. And they were... Was they that all on maggots? Both on trotting single red maggots. Mm. And it was, I think they were probably, if they weren't consecutive casts, they were maybe two or three casts apart. You get little packs of perch, don't you? And I, which I didn't realise until two or three years ago. Yeah. I walked along a canal or a river near Stratford, the Olympic Park with the kids and Look, un look under the end of the boat, and end of the canal. Russell, have you seen that one yeah. where he torches them out? Lamping for perch, <laughs> Alan Blair does it for carp. And he looked under there, and there must have been 50 perch, no bigger than three inches long. Really? And then you sort of start to look into it a bit more, and you, then you realise that they're, they're shoal fish. Yeah, they're little packs. What's that one? Have you seen on Catching Impossible? There's that one where he's at some reservoir, and a whole pack of two pounders comes out of the murk. Is that Martin Fowler's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's He's a bloody good clip. There's literally like a whole shoulder roach and then they all scatter yep. at the camera and then this big menacing looking perch, like about 15 or 20 of them, all uh, pile uh, up. I mean, how many times do you see footage of carp water syndicates when they've got a, a drone in the sky and there's 30 or 40 carp? Wouldn't it be great to see that yeah. with perch in the middle of summer? That would be pretty awesome. A mate sent me a clip of, uh, we're going off on a tangent here, but it's quite nice. A uh, mate sent me a clip the other day of uh, somebody throwing back a perch, and it was like a five, six ounce perch yep. in the water, just under his feet. And this other perch, I swear it looked like nearly a 10 pound bass, <laughs> it came like an American bass, came out of the water, or came out of this water and golfed it, like yep. it was massive. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that's the view. I don't know what you guys think on uh, secrecy and whether you tell people. I'm, I'm quite open about most of it. I'm not gonna tell you where all my spots are. I'm not gonna change my ways. I'm, 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 I'm pretty open on free waters, like you say, on free stretches, yeah. club stretches, club stretches as well. Like I'm on the committee of a local club, and I want anglers to fish the rivers just so that they 
get to attention because all of a sudden the landlord says oh I want another 500 quid for that bit of water and the committee go it's only bloody Dave and John fish it <laughs> and then they, they get lost you know there's, there's clubs that are trying to flog bits of river off just to cash it as an asset so I, I'm keen on telling people that sort of thing but yeah some of the ones where I found it's on the, where I've been cagey, it's on the really small, really small, intimate places where yeah. they're quite hard to find. Yeah, you maybe got to walk through a bit of woodland or follow, go yeah. off the, the public footpath for a little bit and um, yeah, those sorts of places. Yeah, I mean, if, if you told people where it was, how many people would be bothered to get out of bed, it's funny put though, a stick float on and find a... Think, yeah? It doesn't need that much for pressure. Because you, uh, like, I know for a fact I've done it. I caught a PB chub out of this bit down here off the back of watching somebody else's YouTube video. Right, okay. And it took me quite a while to work it out. But <laughs> when you're a local or you've got that, like, oh yeah, I want to catch a bit of that. Yeah. Which I'm like that. I don't know whether you're like that. Yeah. You, you start really rewinding that video and. Oh, I re remember that. And like somebody the other day, oh, you get chatting to people like this guy this morning. They just tell you little things. And I had this one the other day. This guy said to me, oh, go to this place. And you go up there and through there. And there's a white gate. And you go up there. And yeah. I'm like, white gate, right. I'm going to go and look for that white gate. <laughs> Driving around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I have found this white gate. I found a job load of chub. Like loads of them. So there, there's people do... People do do it. Well, you, you say about um, recognisable features. The, the post I put on the Edenridge Angley size um, of my two perch. Well, it had what three words. <laughs> it had what three words. But the, but the first thing John Gore said was, I recognise that tree. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. knew exactly where it was. Yeah, well, anglers do. You know, if, you, if you're if you around there, and albeit that's a good spot that people would, or an, a nice looking spot. Yeah, there's not many swings, intentional swings <laughs> in that area, is there? No, no. But, um, yeah, no, it is, it is funny. Locals pay attention fishermen definitely pay that's why they blur out backgrounds all the time isn't it how many carp shots do you see with just a hedge or a bush behind yeah, it and that's no enough. water i i had it where there's a guy caught a really big pike out the medway near 30 pound pike out the medway and i sussed where it was from just yeah. by the there was a uh, like a coppice of trees and it it, it was only because i've walked that area and yeah. i knew it that i was like i know exactly where that's from and i've never fished there but i've been around there and i'm like that's around you've there. only got to have a rare rare <laughs> tree like an elderberry or something and you think well yeah. they're not telling a penny around here no you can sort of start to suss yeah. it out a bit you're making me more paranoid i'm not going to tell <laughs> anybody where i go i'm in a river open and honest <laughs> yeah how many how many times do you fish in your secret spot when it's someone else's well that's a good one that is a good one yeah 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 because it's not always yeah yeah because you forget and that's what's saying about that guy trolling me about the um fishing the spot saying it was bad etiquette that it's other people's spot so it's anyone's spot. <laughs> yeah, it's anyone can stumble. That, it's, it? it's not. No, no one's Unless got a god-given right to. <laughs> I was here last week. What are you doing here? Yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. What you caught, mate? Yeah. I was here the other week. I'd good luck on maggots, and I tried it over there. Just, just tell people. The other thing as well. Sometimes, like I think people might might be cagey about telling me where there's good spots because they'll think oh, I'm going to go and do a video on it, which I probably will. Yeah. And so I think that might have. I don't think it's that bad, but I think there might be. I, I definitely know a couple of people who wouldn't tell me. <laughs> well, there you go. He's fishing, isn't it? Funny. He's fishing. He's, like I said to you on the phone last night, 30 I'm years just ago. Take this still recording because you never know. 30 years ago, there were over two and a half million people fishing. Now, I think if you look at rod license numbers, you're looking at half that amount, probably twice as many waters accessible to fishermen. Yeah. Um, so the chances of really finding that, that secret spot. Yeah. They're out there though on the rivers, aren't they? Oh, but how many, pe how many people fish the river? Compared to, tw yeah, 20 years yeah. ago, we used to catch, 30 years ago, more than that, we used to catch gudgeon on, on Fireman's Corner, mm. 10 of us, and then you would get as many rods as you could underneath the bridge, <laughs> and people would watch the pike from the bridge, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they could tell you when you're gonna get a bite. Yeah. Saturday morning, yeah, regular no, as clockwork. Well, the trouble is kids are going to carp lakes and stuff like that, goes to carp lakes. Don't and learn anything, don't around. learn enough. Yeah, yeah, there isn't that many people on the rivers. But it's, well, like I say, there's, there's, it, I think these rivers are quite sensitive to a bit of pressure. And that's why I've been catching on this bit at night, where because I think it gets quite a bit of pressure in the day. And I catch on maggots, because um, I can fish finer than everybody else, so I catch more fish. Yep. But it only takes 
a good angler to come through and sack up and or not sack yeah. up but put a bit of pressure on you get those two or three guys who recognize that tree and they're like right i'm gonna get on that yep. and then you go down that spot you don't get a bite down there no. they're like or you've got to work harder for a bite it's like that spot i blanked on last night i'd had three or four chubber out of that in two or three visits never had a bite last night it forces you to go somewhere else it does <laughs> yes that's your point isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i did go somewhere else i didn't get there right there well there you go yeah, it's yeah, yeah, um yeah. Anyway, right, this is, we'll bring this to an end. I've quite enjoyed this podcast. I don't know whether you guys will enjoy uh, this podcast. I might do a few more of these when I can think of a sensible topic to discuss. Um, find, get... find some places where you can tell people where you caught them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I've, Set that as a challenge. I've got, yeah, I've got, I've got a fishing video at the moment that I'm making and I'm, I'm just anxious about releasing it. And when, when I release it, I'm really precious about it. I'm like, oh, no, I don't. I want that for me. March, March 15th. Yeah, well, I'm thinking, actually, I was thinking not March the 15th, maybe like the 1st of April. Right, okay. Because people have got over that, because they're, they're still thinking about fi- fishing the rivers on the 15th. And it's Easter. People yeah. be at home watching telly. Yeah, but they'll have forgotten about it by the opening <laughs> day. But those, those anglers who are into it, they won't forget. No. You know, like you and me, we don't forget those sort of things. You just, it's in the back of your mind. And all the little snippets of information you're picking up all the time, like chatting to that bloke earlier on. Yep. He obviously covers loads and loads of water. And just, oh yeah, that was there. And just, ooh, ooh, ooh. The trouble is, there's more water than there is time, isn't there? One other thing I would say quickly is anglers are far more approachable. I would say coarse anglers are far more approachable. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't. How many times do you go to a, a nursery or a carp lake and say, you, see someone caught with fish and you say, where did you catch it from? What did you catch it on? Mm. You don't ask, do you? No, not really. Because you know really. it's going to be a lead rig with a boily <laughs> well, tied to a island. It, what, what, there's not much diversity in carp. But fish, I think, is but no, nah, but I think coarse anglers will open up yeah. a bit more. Yeah, 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 probably, yeah. Yeah, I haven't really noticed. To be honest, most of my fishing is on my own. Yeah. I'm not really, really uh, encountering. Um, I'm not really encountering anybody else. And no. club lakes, I find a bit, I don't know, find it a bit twitchy. I, I've, or not twitchy, I just can't, I'm not used to it. No. Like having somebody next door, I'm like, normally, I've got the whole field to myself, that's about yeah. right. <laughs> that, that's as close as people yeah. are like to be. Oh, there's somebody in my field. <laughs> yeah. Get out of it. So yeah, you want a, want a fair bit of river, but... Um, yeah, I think I'll take your point, yeah, that the, the uh, coarse anglers are generally more open. You do get a few secret squirrels. I think barbel, I guess because that's nearly a drop down from carp fishing, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I, sp- I suppose the barbel round here are quite rare. It's not like you're on the Trent where there's loads no. of loads and loads of them or on the Seven. No. So, um, but anyway, right, we'll get better right. in this, yeah. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very, very much. much, Andrew. No worries. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, that little podcast. I really enjoyed making it. It was really nice chatting away to Andrew. He's a good bloke. Um, yeah, and I might do another one of these, see how we get on. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.